I've always wondered why they're called worksheets. That's just terrible branding. I mean, if people want kids to get excited about learning, why not call them happy fun time sheets? I'll bring it up at the next faculty meeting. You seem quite pleased, Ms. Reyes. I am. I, I may be wrong, but it does appear as though they kind of understand the material. That depends how you define understand. That's the last time I take a nap on a number two pencil. Perhaps I'm a bit old school, Gummerson, but identifying the phases of the moon from just a picture looks like understanding to me. Well, that's one kind of understanding for sure. Knowing definitions, concepts, or say what the name of a moon phase is called is declarative knowledge. Meanwhile, knowing how to do something like operate a car or perform a task is considered procedural knowledge. <coughs> Pardon me. And understanding the interrelationships between definitions, concepts, and facts is conceptual knowledge. That's the level where students are able to be creative about this new knowledge, think about it in new ways, and apply it to new situations. That last one, that's why I teach. I'm not trying to create the ultimate Jeopardy contestant, spewing trivia answers like some robot. I want them to grow up and be independent thinkers. Call me an idealist, but I envision each of my students becoming capable thinkers and creative problem solvers who will flourish in any career or path that they pursue. I'm just not sure how to get there. When the path seems uncertain, do what the pros do. Head to the internet. Thank you for stopping by Teach Gooder, the one place on the internet where you can be guaranteed to learn about learning. Introducing our hosts, Ms. King, our brilliant resident science teacher, and Stickleton, our very knowledgeable and dapper stick of chewing gum. Today's topic is getting meta. Getting meta is all about getting metacognitive. That means employing metacognitive strategies that can help students acquire, retain, and transfer new content. That's easy to say, but getting meta is tricky business. It takes time, effort, practice, and an awareness of the need. I'm glad you brought up awareness. I used to be one of those teachers that didn't really think about the need to get meta. My lessons were packed with a range of activities, and I gave tons of feedback on all types of assessments. Problem was, most of my students really struggled with applying the learned material to new circumstances or hanging on to it for extended periods of time. They seemed to be getting it, but they really weren't. I have an eerie feeling like someone's been spying on my classroom. So, how can you get there? Well, that brings us to our title, Getting Meta. You see, studies have shown that giving students practice with metacognitive strategies can improve how well they transfer knowledge to new contexts and how long it sticks around in their noggins. Metacognition is a path to understanding. I thought metacognition was merely thinking about your thinking. Pure navel-gazing. Poppycock. That way of thinking is antiquated says the guy who just exclaimed poppycock. Recent research has demonstrated that effective learning involves planning and goal setting, continual monitoring of one's progress by identifying what you know and working on what you don't know, and then adapting as necessary, all of which are part of metacognition. The benefits of metacognition come from using strategies like self-questioning, annotated drawings, concept mapping, checklists, and reciprocal teaching, to name a few. Thanks for stopping by. And remember, if you aren't sure your students understand something, just ask them. Couldn't have said it better myself. Hmm, that was informative. But my head is swimming with all these strategies, and what exactly were they again? Checklists? Annotations? 
Well, well, look at you. You've already gotten started. You thought about what you know and what you don't know, and you thought about what others know. That's why you asked me. All you need now are the strategies. Perhaps we could walk through a few when the students are back from recess? That's one humdinger of an idea. Maybe we should jump ahead in time or something. Let's do that. You think? Today, I want to see if you all truly understand what's happening during the different moon phases by having you model it yourselves. We'll be using this styrofoam ball on a stick to represent the moon, this light bulb for the sun, and your head will be the Earth. <laughs> you will move the moon around your head and be able to observe the changing phases of the moon from your Earth. And by Earth, you mean a head, right, Ms. Reyes? You got it. You have everything you need to show us how you think your bodies need to be positioned to produce each different phase of the moon. Here you go. One for you. I'm coming. Here you go. There's yours. Okay. Now, who can show me where the Earth and moon are when we see, or rather don't see, the new moon? And remember, people, the moon's orbit is slightly tilted, so unless we're talking about a lunar eclipse, your moon shouldn't be on the same plane as your Earth. In other words, your head should not be casting a shadow. Mm. Well, wait. Mm. I can't go back. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. Problem schmoblem. This situation is a perfect segue for teaching students about using metacognitive strategies to develop new conceptual understandings. Do you need some help, Shauna? This is just strange. Like, you're asking us to solve this weird problem in this weird way. We're supposed to think the light bulb is a sun? And the styrofoam ball is the moon? It's kind of making my earth hurt. I couldn't agree with you more. Let's think about what you already know about this. Could you tell me which side of the moon is illuminated for a first quarter moon? If I remember it right, it's the right half of the moon. Using the light bulb and the styrofoam ball, show me where you would be standing for the right half of the moon to be lit up. It looks like the right half of the moon is illuminated. Here! Okay, I'm starting to get how this model works. Look at what you just did there. As a teacher, you know how to ask the right questions to help students organize their thinking. This is a perfect opportunity to try one of those metacognitive strategies. See if you can help Shauna learn to ask herself guiding questions. Let's stop and think for a minute. I asked you to think about what you already know. That's something you can do yourself the next time you get stuck. It's one type of metacognition. Wow! Can you give me another one? I sure can. What position do you have to be in for the moon to be both completely illuminated and visible for someone on Earth? Okay, over here. I think I got it. Wunderbar! Okay, so now I'd like you all to think about where the moon and Earth would be during a lunar eclipse. And if you get stuck, try out that strategy I just showed you. What does moon look like during a lunar eclipse? Where would the Earth need to be to cast a shadow on the moon? A wonderful thing happens when you begin to truly understand something. You can transfer what you've learned to amazing new situations. Wow, you really rocked their world today. More like rock their moon. Hey, isn't the moon a rock? I should have said really moon their world. Wait, that sounds weird. Oh, brother. Once your students realize they're capable of using some of these strategies, they'll be more likely to become more independent and responsible learners. Students should understand that their ability to learn isn't a fixed quantity. It's a skill that keeps getting better over time. And I love how I was able to do this in conjunction with a lesson about lunar phases. 
Well, that's just it. Metacognitive strategies and reflection occurred during learning. It's two birdies with one rock. I think you mean two birds with one... Oh, sorry. I can see your interest in my jokes is waning. <laughs> I need to hire new writers. Chains, you're done. Someone get my agent on the phone. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.